get a job. Get a job. This um this this video is basically my response to a couple of movies. Uh, one of the movies, one of the martial arts, two martial arts movies. One of them is Red Belt, and the other one is Tapped Out. In both of those movies, they were both MMA-ish. And uh, Tapped Out was MMA slash karate. But in both of them, you have a sensei that is having trouble keeping his school open or having trouble making repairs and whatnot. And that's a, oh, woe is me, the whole, the traditional arts are dying, oh, it's so terrible, uh, you know, how can they live, and, you know, it's just the world is so evil and cruel, and life is not fair that, you know, he's not, you know, noble sensei is not making any money off of school, enough to keep the thing open, what are we going to do, what's he going to do, get a job, that's what he could do, get a job. Come on, man. If you're not rich, and you, or if you're not rich, you're not retired, or you're not married to somebody who's rich or retired, is going to let you sit up there all day and make and uh, teach students, you got to get a job. And there's plenty of people who are very good martial artists, they got jobs. And they doing just fine. Some of the best martial artists I've ever met in my life, they had a job. Now, I know the dream is to be able to do whatever your passion is full time. You know, like when I when I was in music, doing first jazz and hip hop, actually first hip hop and then jazz and hip hop again. I wanted to be able to do it full time, but I never got to that point. I had to get a job. One of my music professors played with Gladys Knight and the Pips. Another guy, he was. He wasn't really my teacher, but I consider him a teacher, kind of like a, if it was a Japanese school of martial arts, he would be definitely be senpai, no doubt. Definitely would be my senpai. But uh, he played with EU, Experience Unlimited Go-Go Band. He had a job though. He had to have a job after a while. I met plenty of people, be it arts or martial arts. There was times when they did it full time, but it was also times when they had to get a job. My cousin-in-law that was a pro MMA fighter, I consider him a full-time martial artist, but he has a job though too. Not a nine to five like desk jockey like I am, but he does physical fitness training. You have to have another stream of revenue sometimes. One of the, uh, most prolific martial artist writers of all time, Stephen Barnes. He's created jobs for himself. He has another stream of income. You got to have a job. If you can't make it teaching full time, you got to have a job. And you know what gets me, which I say these movies are really phony, especially those two movies, especially Red Belt and um, Tapped Out. It's a lot of people, I've known several people, I've been to their storefronts. Now you think, oh well, they got a storefront, they're a full-time martial arts teacher, right? But everybody else that pays for their uh, classes have jobs. And most jobs, you know, they don't, You, the world is they're going to get off work is about 3 o'clock. So you know what these people did? They either ran businesses and or work a job until about three o'clock and then they went over there to get to their students and we teach three some of them taught five hours a day starting at three or four o'clock uh one chinese martial artist he i uh, met he has what i think he has two businesses and he ran a school he didn't start his classes from till from about seven o'clock at night I think he ran his classes from 7 to about 10 at night. Every day. So he could cater to people that had what? Had jobs. So the moral of this rant is, you might have to get a job. And you know what? It's okay. And there's nothing wrong. And it doesn't make you any less of a martial artist. And you know, there's one particular person. I'm going to say his name 
But anybody who's in the YouTube martial arts community knows who this guy is because he keeps getting kicked off of YouTube. And I know he's been by some of my videos because I've heard some of my uh, some of my ideas kind of creep into his speech. And that's okay. I borrowed from him too. I'll admit it. He's not the only YouTuber who's been who's but more, way more popular than me, who I know's creep creeped and checked out a couple of my videos because I've heard some of my stuff in, in both of their speeches which is cool because I get inspired by them too they just doing better than me online and that's fine but this one guy right wants to be just full time martial arts instructor which I respect but technically he can't do that because he has to do fitness training that's just the nature of this beast you know, if things really start getting bad and you can't make the money that you're used to from just teaching martial arts, get a job. Get a job. A job. Go back to work and get a job. I know it's, it's a no, especially if you're a minority male, it can be hard for you to find work, but you can find work. You'd have an easier, and I'm talking directly to this YouTuber, you would have an easier time finding a job than I do whenever I have to find jobs. And you know, and this is another thing, I'm gonna go back to the movies now. Another thing that was really so phony, real phony, especially about the movie Tapped Out, that was so phony about the teacher. The teacher's niece says, oh, he only has, what, five students? Oh, uh, you know, if you could convince five students to come to your storefront, five committed regular students, that's about how many you need to keep a class open at a community center. Why don't you go teach out of a community center where you don't have to worry about overhead? You may, if you have good enough people skills, you might be able to convince a community center to let your class run at least twice a week, if not three times a week. My classes are only once a week at each community center that I teach because I want to keep the cost down. The people that can pay more and want to come more often to me, you know what they do? They sign up for more than one class. And I ask some of my once a weekers, hey, um, do you th am I doing something wrong here? Should I offer this more than once? It's like, uh, yes, yeah, Cecil, uh, that would be nice. But really, honestly, I know I can only bring the kids out here once a week or I can only come out here once a week. So, you know, just leave it like it is for right now. And uh, yeah, I know where you're at. So when I'm ready to come and do more, I'll do more. Done. Get a job. And there's nothing wrong with that. Now, am I opposed to people making money? Let's be clear. Am I opposed to people making money and doing it full time? Heck no. If you can find a way to hustle it so that you can work full time as just a teacher, and more power to you. That's why at this point, I don't even hate McDojos. I don't. I don't hate McDojos. Some people want to be McDojoed. Some people just want to get a black belt in one or two years and pay a bunch of money for it. They don't care. They want to pay money to people that they're never going to see, never really going to meet, so they can feel important because they're, they feel like their rank is recognized by a big, huge organization. That's fine. Okay? Wonderful. Because that's what some people want. They want daycare. Do you know people call me up I, at least once a week? If not, once every, one, every other week. But I would say no less than about two or three times a month. Tops. Somebody calls me up. They call my cell phone. I answer. Is, is this the martial law school? The one in Temple Hills? I'm not Grand Tiger. No, no, you the Cecil guy. Yeah. Um, do you have daycare? Um, do you have aftercare? Uh, do you have birthday parties? I say no. No, no. Why not? Uh, do you do birthday parties? Will you come and put a demonstration on a birthday party? No, I don't do that. And then their tone change and they talk to me like it's something wrong with me. Is something wrong with me because I'm not McDojoing? 
it's something wrong with me in their eyes. They want to be McDojo. They want the birthday parties. They want the before and after care and daycare. They want the kitty care karate experience. And you know what? Great. It's good for them. But if you're not willing to do that because you're just oh so pure, look, in, in 2015, um, in the United States, if you're not going to qualify for the Olympics, if you're not going to qualify for the Olympics, if you're not going to be a pro kickboxer, because you're too pure for that. If you're not going to do MMA to make money, then you're going to have to get a job if you want to be able to pay and finance your martial arts experience. You're going to have to have a job. And you know what? My clientele, they seem like they like the fact that I actually have a job. Because when they tell me I can't come because I have to go to work or because of work, I don't look at them like they're crazy. Why? Because I have a job. 